Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check a couple of new products from Beta FPV. In this video I'm going to concentrate on the x Knight V2 5-inch frame and the latest F4 all-in-one 35A flight controller. And on two separate videos I'm going to thrust test the new 1805 2550KV motors and review the M02 VTX and antenna combo. Let's start with the x Knight V2 which is a very light frame for ultralight 5-inch builds. In terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the assembly diagram, the bottom and top plates which secure the carbon fiber arms, a bottom carbon fiber plate for securing the battery, a Beta FPV branded 20cm long battery velcro strap, a bag with all the needed M2 screws for assembling the frame, two 3mm and two 5mm thick battery pads, two rubber anti-slip stickers, and four interchangeable 5 inch carbon fiber arms. In order to assemble the frame, simply secure the bottom plate to the top one using the shorter M2 screws. You should be careful not to over tighten these screws, and by the way, you should also pay attention that the frame doesn't come with a canopy, so you need to either 3D print your own one or purchase it separately. In terms of specs, the wheelbase of the frame is 200mm and it features a true X pattern. The thickness of each replaceable carbon fiber arm is 3.5mm and its width is 6.1mm. The thickness of the bottom and top plates is 1.5 mm. The weight of the frame is 28 grams. Including the canopy, the weight is 35 grams, and the total weight, including the battery protector, is 38.3 grams. In addition, this frame is designed for whoop style 25.5 by 25.5 mm all in one flight controllers, and the mounting pattern of the motors is 8.5 by 8.5 mm. So, overall, this frame looks like an interesting option for an ultralight 5 inch build. It is a little bit flexible, and I hope that these small screws are going to properly secure the arms, so I'm looking forward to see how it's going to perform, which should happen pretty soon on an upcoming build and flight video. Moving on to the new Toothpixtel all-in-one F4 flight controller. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the flight controller, you can find the high-quality XT60 battery connector, which is pre-soldered to 8cm long 14 gauge battery leads, a 35V 680 microfarad capacitor, and a bag with silicone grommets and M2 nuts and screws. In terms of specs, this small but powerful all-in-one F4 flight controller features an integrated 35A BLA32 4-in-1 ESC. It can be powered with between 2 to 6 S batteries using well-separated pads with designated holes for a capacitor. It features two full UI ports and an extra one using the soft serial option. And in addition to a 5V BEC, which is commonly used in order to power up a radio receiver or a 5V video transmitter, it also features a 10V BEC, which is especially useful in order to power up a DJI digital video transmitter. In addition, this flight controller is using M3 25.5 by 25.5mm mounting holes. The outer dimensions of the board are 33.6 by 33.6 by 3.6mm. And it weighs only 7 grams, so it is pretty remarkable that this small and lightweight flight controller can provide you with all the features that I just mentioned. As for the new 1805 motors, which I'm going to thrust test soon using my new RC Benchmark thrust stand, these motors are available in two KV options, 2550KV, which is the version that I'm going to test, which are compatible with up to 4S batteries, and 1550KV, which are compatible with up to 6S batteries. So the new 6X motors in conjunction with the new flight controller and the new 5-inch frame should make it pretty easy to build a very lightweight 5-inch 6S build. Finally, as for the new M02 VTX, I'm going to feature it on a separate video where I'm going to tell you more about it and measure its output strength, and in the meantime I can tell you that its input voltage is 5V, it supports 37 channels, features TBS Smart Audio Protocol, and it has a selectable output strength of 25, 100, 200, and 350 milliwatts. In addition, it comes with an RHCP antenna with an IPX connector and an adapter that will enable you to easily mount the VTX on top of a whoop style stack. Now by the way, in case it wasn't clear, in addition to the upcoming reviews of the VTX and motors, all these parts are going to be featured on the build and flight video, so stay tuned. That's going to be it for this quick video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.